Hi guys, welcome to Encountering Theology. My name is J.D. Martin, and today I have some really exciting news that just came out about John MacArthur's church being able to gather. So what I've done is I've taken uh, some of um, the relevant and more interesting uh, parts of the article and uh, brought, brought it here before us so that we can discuss it and examine exactly what's going on in John MacArthur's church, what did the state say, and let's make some comments on this. So here we have the article. It starts off saying that the judge ruled late Friday afternoon that Grace Community Church can continue hosting indoor worship services and does not have to adhere to any attendance caps or bans on singing. Now this is wonderful and we can praise God and thank God that now the government is not actively, at least in this case, there's been a victory here where the government is not actively saying that only a certain amount of people can attend a church, a place to worship and to gather. That That is a good thing. Uh, so it is also a good thing that they're not banning singing. Singing is, a, is an integral part of our worship. God commands us to address each other with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So uh, praise the Lord that this church is now able to uh, gather without the, you know, the state coming against them and saying you can only have up to 50 people or 10 people in a building that can fit up to 3,000 people. It goes on to say that the church agrees to adhere to mask and social distancing until further, until uh, the full hearing. So, uh, you know, depends on what, how you feel about mask and whether you think this is a good thing or, or bad thing. I can say that I'm glad to see that the church is willing to compromise. See, ultimately, the mask can be inconvenient. The mask can be uh, ultimately kind of making one wonder where does, is this starting a precedent that's going to ultimately lead to other bad stuff where based on public health uh, reasons with very little data, we can force people to comply uh, with what we think is best for them. I think that there is some concern that people have about that and that's genuine. But at the same time, what this is about is not about uh, mask. It's not even about social distancing. It's about being able to worship God. And so I'm glad to see that they're willing to compromise and um, and, and to work with the state and say, okay, if it's really about public health, then you know what? Fine. We'll put the mask on. You know, you're saying that this will uh, be helpful to the community. We'll go ahead and put the mask on uh, for the sake of, you know, compromise, for the sake of peace. The fact that our main thing here is we want to worship, not the main thing is we don't want to wear a mask. And so too, uh, with social distancing, I think that there's that's reasonable, right? It, again, we have to ask ourselves, okay, let's just be a reasonable person. <laughs> let's just have the reasonable person standard. And what I would say is it's reasonable it, for at least some people who, who do think that the virus is, is dangerous and, and concerning to think that, you know, I would want the person to be six feet apart or, and, or that being six feet apart, apart will uh, cause the virus to spread less. I mean, I think that's a reasonable standard that most people can agree with that we should try to social distance in order to try to lessen, you know, the spreading of the virus. Now, some people might be wanting to go into herd immunity mode and uh, think, well, no, you know, it's at that point, though, you're not arguing that social distancing isn't actually effective into slowing down the spread of the virus. You're actually saying that we should speed up the the spread of the virus. And, you know, people have different stances on that, but most people aren't actually making that argument right now, or most of uh, people aren't saying that we should uh, go into herd immunity. There hasn't been a society-wide consensus that that's the direction we're going. We're more trying to do a virus and do other things. So again, I think it's, uh, it's reasonable to put the mask on for the sake of the, the watching world and to agree to some social distancing. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that they are willing to do that. John MacArthur goes on to say, we are simply continuing to do today what we have done for the past 63 years that Grace Community Church has always been open and welcome to the Los Angeles community to serve their spiritual needs. The pastor said in a statement, we will remain open and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to all who decide they want to come and worship with 
us. Oh, I love this man, John MacArthur. I, I love his heart. Do you see that? Really, he could have added to that. I mean, he's talking about what they have done for the last 63 years of, I guess, the history of their church. But we as Christians have been doing this for the last 2,000 years. And really, we've been doing this since the time of Adam 6,000 plus years ago, right? We've been doing this for a very, very long time of gathering one day a week, whether that be the Lord's Day or the Sabbath, to worship God and to uh, to be a community, to worship God in community and in harmony. And I love this because it's they're there to serve the spiritual needs of the, the, the saints, right? Of not only the saints, but even unbelievers that come into the door. Who can serve the spiritual needs except for the church? Nobody. Only the church can deal with your spiritual needs. And yes, I know we live in a secular society that doesn't really think spiritual needs are important, but they are important. We actually do have spiritual needs and we do need to be ministered spiritually. In fact, these are some of the most important things. And look at this. He says, we will remain open and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ to all who decide they want to come and worship with us. We're not turning people away. We will continue to preach the gospel. That's what you have to, no matter what you think about John MacArthur, you have to love him for that. You have to say, this man preaches the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that's why God has used this man so mightily to save souls, because he's preaching the gospel, which is the power of God to salvation for all who believe. The complaint from Grace Community Church states that the American people have begun to see that they are being cheated by their own government. Again, that's what that's what they're saying. They're saying, look, this is not you're just being honest and you're just concerned about public health. There's double standards here. We can see that we're being targeted politically, that we're not your politically political allies. You know that we actually vote against you or we're not. Or even if we do vote for you, you know, we're not your base so that you think that you can treat us this way. We're actually being targeted and discriminated against you. We're being cheated. This is not just honest concern that you you're just honestly concerned um, and you're doing this uniformly to everyone, and then we are just the rebels of the group. No, you're specific, particularly targeting the church because you don't value the church, or because you're trying to destroy the church, or potentially both. And this is being cheated and saying, listen, we never gave you uh, the power. This is uh, the Constitution, this agreement that we have with you is not so that you can become a tyrannical government that just tells us, you know, we can't uh, play pickleball or tennis, that we can't do things that we have the right to do. And one of the things that we have the right to do that no government can ever take away is to worship God. We could live in a state that's completely illegal to worship God. And guess what? We always have a right to worship God. And we're always called to worship God one day a week, formally in the community of the saints. The, the article goes on to say, the lawsuit pointed to the double standard that has been applied to Black Lives Matter protesters who have been allowed and even encouraged to flood the streets by the thousands while the churches have been forced to keep their sanctuaries closed over concerns of worship services that could cause spikes in coronavirus infections. Again, is this not the, the, the best example of the fact that the government officials value you know, the, the BLM protests but don't value the churches? So if it's all about public health and all about coronavirus and spikes of infections and all these things, well, why are they allowing the BLM protesters, not only allowing them, but encouraging them and even participating in them? Oh, it's too dangerous to do anything. It's too dangerous to gather. We can't even possibly allow churches to, to meet. It'll be the end of the world. Oh, there's a Black Lives Matter protest. Let's go out there. We have to do change. Systemic racism. Get out there and march. Forget social distancing. This is the most important thing ever. Come on. If that's not double standards, come on. It's clearly double standards. I'll tell you, not double standards. If the fire, the fire department shows up to your church and says, your building's on fire, you cannot worship here, you have to leave, okay? And they would go to Walmart or a Black Lives Matter protest building and say, your building's on fire, you cannot protest here, you cannot shop here, you cannot do anything in this building, it's on fire, you have to leave. That is fair standards. But if you go to the church and say, mm, well, for this or that reason, you can't meet BLM protests meeting in exactly the same kind of building and you say, oh, not only can you meet, but this is great. This is wonderful. We should all join in this. This is the most important thing. All those other factors I said don't matter anymore. That is called partiality and that is evil. 
They have witnessed how the restrictions imposed on them by public officials allegedly to fight the COVID the COVID-19 pandemic simply do not apply to certain favored groups. This is the definition of partiality. States MacArthur's lawsuit, when many went to the streets to engage in political or peaceful protesters reportedly against racism and police brutality, these protesters refused to comply with pandemic restrictions. Is that true? It is absolutely true. And what did you hear the political party saying, the media and all that? Well, instead of enforcing the public health orders, public officials were all too eager to grant de facto exception for these favored protesters. Now, the, the, the most extreme example of this that I can think of is when there was the, the protest that was going on where they were trying to, they were protesting the lockdown and saying, you know, let's, let's, you know, not lock down. This is crazy. Our businesses are dying. We need to get back in there. And uh, all I saw in, in the media and the kind of perspective is, oh, these bunch of idiots, these stupid people, they're protesting, they're going to spread the virus, they're making everything worse. Oh, they're killing us with their protests. In, in other words, they're, they're destroying everything that we tried to do because of the protests and they are actually making, why, why did we even uh, shelter in place this whole time if they're just going to gather and protest, right? That was, that was what they were saying over and over and over. BLM protests, not a word. It's like the coronavirus didn't exist at all. And again, that shows you, I mean, what's going on here? Like all of a sudden, do they really think that actually a pandemic that's going to kill everyone and and, and cause billions of deaths or, or whatever is really, you can't postpone a BLM protest? Something tells me if it was the plague, something tells me if it had a 70% death ratio, you wouldn't even have to tell people not to protest. They wouldn't do it. All you have to do is give them the right information and people are not going to protest. And if they did under those conditions, I don't care what they're protesting. You're going to say, it ain't the time for this. 70% death rate. You're killing us literally. Not one day, okay, you might over flood the system. And then when I go and, and try to go to the ER, I don't feel safe, so I don't go. Or I can't, you know, get service because it is over flooded. No, no, I'm talking about like literally you are dying from this virus. You are dying from this pandemic. Under those kind of catastrophic conditions, there's not going to be a favorite group. There's not going to be you simply saying, okay, BLM, because you're my favorite protester, you can do this, uh, but the church can't. So that's a clear act of, of inequality and partiality. I like what this one uh, Christian woman, she said, she said, I think it's very important to my mental state to listen to the word of God. To me, it's essential and it keeps me grounded. And let me first off, the word of God, I don't know why they did not capitalize. God is almost <laughs> talking about offensive. That's offensive to me. We don't capitalize uh, false gods. We capitalize true gods, uh, the true God, right? Yahweh. But yes, the, the word of God is important to my mental state. It's important to me. It's essential. It keeps me grounded. And even if I didn't think so, God has commanded it in his word that we gather to worship. It's essential to him. And that's why I really don't like this essential, non-essential talk. Worshiping God is always essential. The government does not give me the right to worship God. God calls me to worship him. It's absolutely essential. We got to, you got to get this into the, the government's head. You don't have the right to call our worship non-essential. That is not your prerogative. You were not given the sword to declare worship as non-essential. Worship is always essential. We are always called to worship God. MacArthur, for his part, has indicated he has no plan to comply with the demand at the beginning of last Sunday's worship service. The 81-year-old pastor, let me stop here, 81-year-old on fire, right? On fire for the Lord, willing to uh, fight anyone and to stand up for the truth no matter what. You have to respect an 81-year-old man usually isn't uh, doing these kind of things, right? I mean, he, he, he has... Um, a huge ministry, uh, a huge church. Something tells me he has plenty of money in the bank where he could retire if he wanted, but no. He's going to, it sounds like he's going to use every last breath and every last strength. I mean, this is 81. People usually retire at 65. John MacArthur could have retired at 65. 70? 75? He's still going. This guy is amazing. He opened up his last Sunday worship service. He said, uh, he welcomed to the congregants. He said, the Grace Community Church peaceful protest. I love it, you know, because again, 
supposedly, you know, protest, your right to protest is a right that can never be super, superseded by based on anything. Of course, that's not true. Like I said, you can't protest in a building that's on fire. If, in fact, we were having the plague, nobody would be arguing you have a fundamental right to protest in the middle of the plague when you're literally going to kill everyone, obviously, at that time that you aren't. But clearly, we're not in those circumstances where we're saying, okay, it's protest, fine. So protests are okay. So we're going to do a peaceful protest against you declaring our worship be non-essential, not important, and you can shut us down. So we're going to peacefully protest that by worshiping in our building. It's just so, it's so wonderful. And um, the irony is, it's just so powerful. As, as for whether it's wise for certain attenders to return to in-person worship services, MacArthur told Kiel, I don't know how to say her name, uh, he had entrusted his congregants with that determination. He said it's up to the attendees to make adult decisions about the reality of their physical and spiritual health and how that balance works for each one of them. Again, you got to love John MacArthur. You know what he's saying? We're adults. Ultimately, the person themselves has to decide whether or not they want to put the risk of getting in that car and putting on the seatbelt and driving to the location, right? Ultimately, that individual has to decide, are they going to put that risk? You might say, it's not worth the risk for me. I'm just going to walk or I'm not going to uh, show up at all. I'm going to have someone else drive or something else. You have to decide for yourself. He's saying, listen, I'm going to give it the decision to show up to church. I'm not making you show up to church. You can show up to church if you want. That's an adult decision that you have to make. You have to say, okay, what do I think about the pandemic? What do I think my chances are getting it? How important is uh, gathering to church with me? What about these alternative services? How hot is it outside? And all of these various factors, and you ultimately yourself are going to have to make the decision of whether or not you want to gather for church or not. And all MacArthur is saying is, listen, our doors are open. We're always willing to teach, encourage, love, and fellowship with you. And we, it sounds like John MacArthur saying, we don't feel that the pandemic is such that, you know, it's akin to the buildings on fire. I, I think that if this was the plague, if 70% of people were dying, John MacArthur's church wouldn't be open, right? Because he would decide himself it's just simply too dangerous. He doesn't feel that way. He feels that it's not too dangerous. The people that want to come to a church, they are not being forced to go either. They too think it is not too dangerous. And he's saying it should be our decision, the church and under the elders and the people's decision who come to the church, whether or not they want to come and put that risk on themselves. Gotta love John MacArthur. I absolutely agree with that. There does come to a time in extreme circumstances where uh, people like way up here have to start making decisions for people way down here. But usually that's tyranny. And, and usually that is abuse. And that's exactly what we're seeing here, that there was a time and a place when maybe this could have been the plague where we could just we need to shut down and we need to re, you know, reevaluate and make sure it's not the plague or whatever. I mean, maybe you disagree with that, maybe not. But that seems at least somewhat reasonable. But when you start to weaponize this and start to take advantage of this and start to, as the article uh, stated, start to feel like your government is taking advantage of you and abusing you then that's where it steps too far. And we have to say, are we going to serve God or are we going to serve you? Are we going to worship the Lord? Or are we going to worship you? Who is sovereign? Remember, Christ is sovereign over all. And so we, we don't just do that to become rebels. We're not rebels. We love the government. We love people. We are submissive people. But we're ultimately submissive to God. And sometimes we cannot obey Caesar because to obey Caesar is to disobey God. So I uh, hope this was helpful, super happy, and super thrilled about what's going on uh, with John MacArthur and his church being able to gather. I like the compromise he's making with the with the mask and doing some social distancing. And let's just continue to pray down the victory and be so thankful for John MacArthur being willing to stand up and be the voice of the church when so many other people have been absentees or have even spoken out against uh, the efforts of, of this uh, godly man. So uh, let's be thankful to him. Let me say one last thing. If you disagree or someone else disagrees, let's have a ch charitable dialogue. Let's be charitable to one another and, and try to make sure that we're not actually arguing facts, uh, but we're arguing theology because the facts are the facts, right? And some people have a different perspective on the facts. You can be right or wrong about that. And that's a factual issue. 
but the theology, the fundamentals, the principles are, should all be the same. We should all agree on the basic principles. And what I would encourage you is when you're discussing this with others, especially with someone who disagrees, say, okay, before we go into the facts about the pandemic, about uh, the you know healthcare and all of these things and how bad the COVID-19 is and all of that, let's, let's shove that over here. Let's just talk about principles. In principle, you know, should we worship God as, as much as possible. In principle, you know, if we see that a government is abusing the power that it has and trying to shut down churches, should we comply? I would encourage you to bring the conversation to the principles once we agree on the principles and say, okay, now this other thing is a factual reality. And so now we have to just talk about facts. And and we can, you know, some people have different perspectives on the facts, and we let's talk about facts without mixing it into the theology so that it looks like uh, good Christian, bad Christian. No, it might be just ignorant Christian or Christian who has a different view of the facts over here, and we disagree with the facts and not about the theology. So uh, I hope this uh, video was helpful. Again, super excited and thankful to John MacArthur. If you like this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe, share this to anyone that you think would be helpful. Until next time, God bless. Bye-bye.